Welcome back to another graphics comparison. The Atelier Lulua graphics comparison can be considered a bit of a pilot for the series, and it went over rather well. So this time we'll take a look at Super Neptunia RPG and compare the graphics between the PC, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch versions of the game. Thank you to Idea Factory for supplying the PS4 and PC versions. When I told them I wanted to do a comparison, they were on board to send me the download codes for them, so that's great. I bought the Switch Limited Edition myself, just so you know. Before we get into it, I want to say congrats to Trailiant or Trailiant? Hopefully I got that right. For winning the Super Neptunia RPG Nintendo Switch download code giveaway. Thank you to everyone who entered. It was a fun thing to do, so perhaps it's something we should do again in the future. So, on to the graphics comparison. I'll let you know the hardware I'm running first. On the PC side of things, I have a PC that was built in 2012 and upgraded over the last few years. It's running Windows 10, the CPU is an Intel i5-3450, and my graphics card is an NVIDIA GTX 970 from Gigabyte. It's slightly factory overclocked and has 4GB of RAM. The computer itself has 16GB of RAM. In terms of consoles, the PS4 is a base model, so not a pro. I think a base model PS4 is more indicative of what most people would have. And the Switch is a Switch, because that's all there is. For now, anyway. All the footage is recorded in 1080p, so that way it's a fair comparison between all the platforms. Right off the bat, the hierarchy in graphics is quite clear. The game runs and looks the best on the PC. The PlayStation 4 is in second place, and the Nintendo Switch comes in last. Throughout the video, I'll also try and make sure to describe what's not immediately evident, because YouTube compression does kill some, uh, sometimes even obvious differences between the footage. Also, if you can, set the video quality to either 4K or 2K on YouTube. Despite the footage being recorded in 1080p, I upscaled the footage to 4K, which means you'll get a truer impression of what the graphics look like in real life. In other words, it keeps the YouTube compression at bay somewhat. Let's discuss the performance first. The PC is best here. The game runs at 60 FPS much more consistently and doesn't bog down as much and has the shortest loading times. The PC version does stutter and bog down here and there. It's a problem with the game on all platforms. So while the PC game stutters the least, it's still present and noticeable. You'll notice it the most when initiating battles, during battles, just as attacks happen, as well as just at the end when you win. Super Nap on the PlayStation also runs at 1080p. While you can tell that 60 frames per second is a target, the game doesn't always reach that frame rate. I don't think it's enough to seriously impact platforming, but it's a thing you notice once you've played the PC version, and probably even if you haven't, because, well, you can tell when the frame rate dips slower than 60 FPS. The same is true with some battles. If there are multiple enemies and or a lot of attacks, and special effects happening at the same time. You'll see the game slow right down. You'll notice also when, not just in towns, but if you're just running around in the world, the frame rate fluctuates quite a bit too. It's definitely the worst on the Nintendo Switch though. Most of the time the game runs around 30 FPS. Platforming can feel wonky and stuttery, and I found it harder to dodge enemies when just running around than it is on the PS4 and PC games. Battles are quite herky-jerky if there's a lot of stuff going on, and loading times are noticeably longer. Interestingly, the Switch and the PC have the fastest saving times. The PS4 is a bit clunky because of the system save menu that comes up and slows everything down with its animations. I just want to save quickly and keep playing, thank you. Thankfully, the game does run natively at 1080p on the Switch, so you don't have that fuzzy text and menu phenomenon like you do with the Switch ports of Disgaea. That just makes my eyes water after a while. Switching things around in the menu, like changing between characters to customize equipment or skills, also stutters, which isn't great. Overall, I wish it was smoother. At this point, I'd even accept a resolution drop for better performance. Let's talk about textures now. At first glance, the games can look almost the same. That's if we ignore the frame rate variations, of course. The PS4 and PC versions look identical. The Switch version is where we start seeing some real differences. Like Vanillaware games, Super Neptunia RPG has several layers to give depth. There's a plane that you walk on, a background layer, as well as a foreground layer. Well, there's probably more than just those three layers, but you can kind of divide them into those categories. You'll notice that some of those elements on the Switch often look pixely, especially the foreground layer. 
It looks awful. It's really in your face, so you notice it right away. Some enemies also suffer from pixelitis, like this fire monster. It's kinda bad looking. In handheld mode, it doesn't look that bad, but on a proper screen, the flaws are immediately apparent. In terms of effects, the PS4 and PC versions seem to be on the same level again. The Switch version has issues. Basically, all the effects look pixelated. In fights, you see it all the time, whether it's regular or special attacks. There's even a cutscene where Histi glows, and it's particularly awful looking. The glowing effect is supposed to be a more intricate shape, but it just looks bad. It's terribly pixely. It's such a stark contrast compared to most of the surroundings, which are for the most part sharp and defined. You know how the volcano region has this blurry edge around the window to signify the hot temperatures? The Switch doesn't handle it all that well either. Every effect that is supposed to have a smooth transition or fade is pixelated and rough looking. It's really too bad. It's the same problem Atelier Lulua had. The last thing we gotta talk about is censorship. I'm sure some of you know this, but the PS4 version has two altered CG images. The first one is a vert. The image on the PS4 game is zoomed in because you can't show underwear in games, apparently. Except it's fine with Neptune, so I don't get that. The second censored image is literally a more censored version of an already censored image. It shows the cast in a hot spring with steam obscuring their bits. In the PS4 game, there's more steam. Neptunia isn't that fanservice heavy, hence the T rating, so it's a bit strange that Sony thought that these two images needed alterations. Everything else is the same with all three games in regards to the CG images. Overall, I think Super Neptunia RPG is a good looking game. The art style is nice to look at, and there's a great sense of diversity with the environments and locations. The PC and PS4 games look the best, with the winner being the PC version because of the smoother performance. The Switch is clearly the worst looking and worst performing game of the bunch. You have the benefit of mobility, but whether that's actually a big deal or not really depends if you can stomach the graphical differences. But it's not all just visual. I feel the general gameplay is hampered by the performance issues, especially with platforming. It just gets frustrating after a while. Maybe if you've never played the other versions, it's fine for some, but personally, it bugs me. So that's what the three versions of Super Neptunia RPG are like in terms of graphics and performance. If you have anything to add, don't hesitate to post your experience in the comments. I'm sure someone will benefit from the extra information. As always, thank you to all Patreon supporters. If you want to help out the channel, you can check out the website for yourself and see some of the benefits that you get by supporting the channel, other than obviously helping out. You can also watch videos early, get exclusive news on what I'm working on, and even get your name on the end card, like you see here. And the description also shows other links to places I am online, like Twitter, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.